Welcome to the Power of Culture. I'm Al Mayasa bint Hamad bin Khalifa Al Thani. My nation, Qatar, is on a creative journey supporting the talents of a rising generation, reaching out to other countries through the arts and building an entire cultural infrastructure. In each episode of The Power of Culture, I'm joined by a leading artist or architect, philanthropist or museum professional who is part of Qatar's journey. Listen in as we discuss what the power of culture can do. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by the director of the 321 Qatar Olympics and Sports Museum, Abdullah Yusuf Al Mullah. Good morning, Abdullah. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit uh, more about the idea behind the 321 uh, Qatar uh, Olympic and Sports Museum? Well, thank you, Your Excellency, and thank you for the audience. Actually, the museum is a legacy project of the 2006 Asian Games held in Doha and will uh, signify uh, the importance of the of the sports in Qatar National Vision 2030. The sports are a vital aspect of Qatar uh, heritage and culture. The 321 Olympic and Sports Museum will demonstrate the sports have uh, the power to build a bridge of understanding between people and the culture. The 321 uh, Qatar Olympic uh, Sports Museum is committed to providing engaging educations and inspiring everyone to be uh, physically active, whatever their ability is. Abdullah, you were part of the Asian Games Doha in 2006, right? Yes, indeed. Can you tell us what your role was? Because this museum idea is a legacy from the Doha Asian Games 2006. What, what role did you play in the Doha Asian Games? Well, I was the director of the international protocol uh, during the Asian Games. Actually, I was in the in the in the bid file and in the organizing committee. So I have uh, learned a lot, and I have uh, delivered as a team. We delivered this the biggest uh, sports mega uh, in Qatar history, and uh, we built up a lot of relationship with uh, all the NOCs, 45, 44 NOCs uh, that member in the Olympic Council of Asia. And in addition to that, we have built a great uh, relationship with the uh, IOC executive board and IOC uh, commissioning uh, members. So uh, it was a really a big uh, opportunity for uh, the people of Qatar who worked in the Asian game to reflect, uh, you know, that, that vision of His Highness the Amir, uh, the father, uh, when he thought about hosting the Asian game. As a matter of fact, Your Excellency, uh, the Amir, the father, uh, he had a dream to host the Asian game back in 1979 when the, uh, the, the concluded the Bangkok uh, the Asian game in 1978 and he was informing all the board members of the uh, sports council that why we don't host such a big event. Then, you know, he gave us the green light or the, the, the sports, uh, you know, key people in Qatar to go ahead and proceed to build up the infrastructure, the stadiums, build up the human resources by hosting so many events and gain a lot of experience, Your Excellency. I didn't know that actually, that my father wanted to host the Asian Games as early as 1978, but um, it's very, it's really amazing how much Qatar has developed its sports infrastructure and competitions and how Qatar's Vision 2030 has um, really set the roadmap for future competition. I mean, we're, we're hosting the Asian Games again in 2030 and we are entering the bid for the Olympics. So you've, you've, you've seen a lot of development, Abdullah, working close to these organizations, haven't you? Well, I, I, am, I am honored that I am uh, worked with all these great people of Qatar and I, I, I learned a lot. And uh, as a matter of fact, we are hosting the Asian Cup, uh, Your Excellency, in 2023. So we are going to be busy. And, you know, it was an, a great opportunity that His Highness, the Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani, is giving, uh, you know, the blessing. And His Highness uh, Sheikh Jassim, that he is, you know, uh, thinking outside the box and he is behind all this, you know, a great achievement that, you know, the Qataris that they are uh, conducting such a big uh, event, such as, uh, you know, that so we get the trust of the International Federation and the IAAF. We host two big uh, mega sport indoor uh, athletes and also the outdoor championship in 2019. We hosted the beach games. We hosted the handball uh, in 2015. So just, you know, imagine that uh, hosting such a big event, how the people of Qatar, uh, national and expatriates, they are learning a lot 
and to, they are keen to serve Qatar to put it in the uh, sports global uh, around the world. It's very true. The Asian football is coming to Qatar, I think, by default because the host country is not able to host it. And um, Qatar's sports infrastructure, because of all the people you mentioned, is is ready to host any level of competition. We also have the FINA Games, don't we, next year? Next uh, year, January of 2024. Uh, more than th- more than 3,000 athletes, and it's going to be a great competition. And also that uh, it's going to be near the Mia Park uh, for the diving. So they're going to build up a nice uh, diving uh, board there. Uh, Abdallah, I think this brings us nicely into the museum itself, the, the story of the museum. It's the journey and the history of sports, both from the Olympic uh, movement, from the ancient games to the modern games, as well as Qatar's history of hosting tournaments. As a museum director, tell us a little bit more about the visitor experience through the museum. What is the journey? Well, uh, Your Excellency, uh, if you just allow me that we have three key messages that, you know, we always uh, convey it to the, uh, our visitors that we have uh, uh, to educate, to entertain and to inspire. And we are building a museum, a culture in Qatar, uh, and the 321 is part of this. And we, we also want a local Qatari people and expatriates to feel part of the international sporting world and experiencing the excitement and also to start uh, with the entrance into the museum gallery, which is designed to showcase emotion experience in watching as, as a sports event. Beginning of the world of sports, showcasing the ancient sports by geographical area in the five continents. Then we're moving to the uh, 18th and 19th century uh, of the emergence of the modern sports, followed by the Olympic gallery. The Olympic gallery, it is by itself a great history that, and that we are really digging back to 770 7- 6 BC with all these objects and telling the story and then we have we are proud to say that we own all the uh, summer Olympic torches and winter Olympic uh, torches that in, in hall of the, of the of the torches then we'll move to the the hall of athletes and Qatar has host a nation and Qatar sports culture and activation zone when we selected the 100 athletes we always you know just uh, consider what's what's their achievement, consider that they have a clear history, consider that they are setting up a good example for the new generation and young generation to make histories. So it is really, the museum owns today more than 16,000 objects and other three that we loan it. So we, we are really uh, very proudly that we are also a member in the, in the IOC and uh, museum network that is giving us a lot of help and we, we are sharing stories together and uh, along with uh, other international federation they are uh, telling us you know what to do, what what we should display and what advice they will give us so we have with the fifa with the iwaf and with so many museum national museum in in, in manchester and also in nice and as well in germany so we are really expanding our uh, you know a three to one museum relation with all even with the uh, who you know they are we are to, to build a healthy lifestyle to the, to the uh, people of Qatar uh, in general. No, I agree. And I and I think uh, the location of the museum is quite unique. Uh, it's connected to the stadium. I believe this was a vision of His Highness uh, the Emir, Sheikh Tamim, when he was chairman of the Asian Games and followed uh, up with the request of his father at the time of the Asian Games. And I also know that having the museum within Aspire Zone, a project of His Highness Sheikh Jassim, makes it very unique in terms of infrastructure and facilities. So essentially, the visitor can continue the journey about sports and healthy lifestyle outside the museum. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. You know, I, I have to, uh, you know, admit and admire that we are really lucky in Qatar that we have uh, our leadership. They are they are loving the sports. And, you know, His Highness Damir Sheikh Tamim, he himself and his highness Sheikh uh, Jassim, they played football and they played tennis. And by the way, Your Excellency, we have a, a nice uh, objects of his highness Sheikh Tamim when he won, uh, you know, the GCC uh, tennis tournament in Qatar when he was 16 years old. And we have his rocket and we have his pictures uh, when he won that uh, tournament. And, uh, you know, I believe that they, they both they behind this 
sports, a great uh, re sports revolution in Qatar, and supported by His Highness the Amir, the, the father, that he is the sport lover w when he was uh, young and he played uh, football when he was in, in, in his uh, you know early uh, ages. That His Highness that played in Doha Stadium. Yes, uh, His Highness used the same racket for the opening uh, of the sports museum by hitting a ball into the crowd. That was a very uh, happy moment. We organized the obstacle course this Ramadan season um, and we're planning to do another one during the World Cup. How was the experience for you with the obstacle course in the Aspire Zone that's linked to the you know, mission of the sports museum, which is promoting active living and healthy lifestyle amongst children and families in, in, in our community? Well, it, it was a great opportunity for uh, uh, Qatar Olympic Sport Museum to uh, conduct the obstacle race, and it was a great success uh, during we, during the month of Ramadan at night time. And we did not expect that huge number of the families and children they that they participated, and uh, you know they were so excited that they had to do activities. Though it is a uh, you know the holy month of Ramadan, usually it is little bit slow. But, uh, you know, it was really a fantastic uh, event that we conducted. And, you know, we are going to do that uh, during the World Cup in the, in the fan zone where, with our colleagues in the Children's Museum in Dadu Garden. So uh, the same experience, I believe that it's going to happen and to, to, to enrich and to involve the children to do this physical, uh, you know, uh, literacy to encourage this is one of the programs that we are in the in the Olympic Museum we are uh, handling that and also we are a member of the physical literacy international physical literacy uh, committee and so let's go back to the to the sports museum you know uh, when his when uh, his highness the father emir mentioned the Olympic Museum to the IOC president of the time in 2006, Mr. Samaranch Sr. He mentioned his desire to have an Olympic Museum and because Qatar has not hosted the Olympics, we made it a museum on sports in the Olympics. But a big section of the museum is actually dedicated to the Olympic Games from ancient Olympia to today. Tell us a little bit more about the, the torch gallery, for example, or the history of the Olympics. Um, why do you think it was important for us to have this in our museum? Well, uh, I believe before I answer this question, Your Excellency, I have to uh, mention to the audience that the founder of this uh, museum is His Highness the Amir the Father. As you mentioned during the Doha 2006 Asian game, uh, he had a, a business lunch with the late uh, President Antonio Samaranch, the IOC pre president. And he was, as Qatar hosted so many big events, so we have more than 500 events, and we just imagine that how much legacy that we have and his highness the emir the father he wants to safeguard this legacy for the upcoming generation to know that qatar uh, played a big role in, in in conducting sports during the you know many years so uh, the idea came from his highness the emir father to to build up this uh, museum and uh, to answer your questions uh, the olympic uh, you know part olympic uh, galleries that it is it is telling the stories just imagine from seven seven in 6 BC and how the four years they are conducting the Olympic in the, in the, in the modern uh, time now, uh, the, 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 the story behind that, that, you know, they celebrated to the God uh, of, of Greek and the king as well. So when he uh, got married and, uh, you know, they were celebrating his anniversary and they decided to go every four years to celebrate, uh, you know, his anniversary. And that's why it came the, tr the trend of the Olympic uh, conducting every four years until we reached to 1986, the first Olympic game in, uh, in Athens. And of course, the torch, it's a story about, uh, you know, because all the... The good timing and the good surprises, always the, 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 the country that they host uh, their uh, the Olympic, they, they have a, a surprise for the spectators, how you light the torch. So that's why the torch, it's a very important. And we, in Qatar Olympic Sports Museum, we decided to build a nice hall and to get all the original and even some of the cold run of the, of the, of the, some of the Olympics. But by the way, Your Excellency, the most favorable uh, torch for uh, the state of Qatar, it's 1992, because when Mohammed Suleiman, he won the bronze medal, the first bronze medal for Qatar in Barcelona. And, you know, this, this medal, it has 
made for Qatar a history to enter to the uh, medals standing in the Olympic history. And now we, we are really proudly to mention that we have so many different color of the medals uh, as well. And Ms. Mu'taz Bersham, and he, when he reflected the, the, the real Olympic value, the excellence, the friendship, and the, the respect when they share the uh, gold medal with uh, Marco, uh, the, the player, uh, the athletes from Italy. Yes, that was a, a big moment in Tokyo and uh, His Highness honored them with uh, a painting by Takashi Murakami, who um, you know is a friend of Qatar, but also a way to celebrate Qatar Japan 50 years of bilateral relationship. You know, it's it's really interesting how the Olympics and the sports brings people together and celebrates moments of um, humanity, as the one we we saw with Joe Marco and and uh, Bersham. Uh, Abdullah, you you are very you like sports and you you are very passionate about. Um, the museum itself, I've seen you develop uh, the programs and with great passion and enthusiasm. Amongst all the items in the museum, what, what do you think is your favorite part of the experience for, for the visitors? Well, to be honest with you, Sheikh, I love the American football. So I am really pleased to, uh, with our uh, Super Bowl trophies that, you know, we are displaying it from John Montana. And now we have Tom Brady also uh, rings that is going to be displayed. And uh, he won seven Super Bowl. And, and uh, also, uh, I'm also very proud of the 1858 football rules from Sheffield FC, uh, the world's oldest football club. These are the very unique and were brought to us by His Highness the Amir, the father. So we are really very appreciate his contribution to our museum. Yes, I didn't know you liked American football. How did that, uh, did you study in America or how did you get interested in American football? Yes, I am, by the way, Sheikh, I studied in America and Arizona, but I'm, uh, I'm a Cowboy fan, Dallas Cowboys fan. So, uh, a so crazy are you happy one. <laughs> that we have uh, Tom Brady's seven rings coming the, for the first time being on display at the sports museum? Well, it's going to be a great opportunity, Sheikh. And also we have uh, Dallas Cowboy helmets that all the players, they signed when they won the Super Bowl uh, in the early times that when they used to win a Super Bowl, Dallas Cowboys. You know, it's very nice to see how a lot of the athletes who are coming to Qatar to compete, they donate objects or they lend their, their belongings to the museum, as well as, you know, the local residents who have given us a lot of donations throughout the years. I think that tells a lot about the, the community that we have and the visitors that come through and how they feel towards Qatar in terms of preservation of culture and heritage. So I think you have a lot of work to do now during the FIFA World Cup to try to collect unique items from the World Cup. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about the FIFA mascot, Laib? Okay, uh, Sheikh, we, uh, you know, part of our uh, contribution uh, and enhancing Qatar hosting the World Cup, we decided to go and have a, a football exhibitions. And that's, it's really, it takes you through the history of the, of the football. And then we have the, as you know, the referees and the rules of the football, they always, they criticize, you know, the spectator, they criticizing the referees in the games, but we are really... Uh, putting some, uh, you know, just giving them some credit and uh, displaying uh, rules of the football and inter doing the interactive. And there are some uh, multiple choice questions to, to, to test their, their knowledge and the football rules. So, and also we have uh, uh, decided to bring up, you know, the Legends T-shirts uh, during this exhibition, which it will last for six months. It started from uh, th 1st of October of this year, and it will be concluded next uh, March or 1st of April of uh, 2023. We are uh, just uh, highlighting their uh, achievement and highlighting their fans' testimonies and, you know, just to, to get them interactive with the big event that Qatar is hosting, Sheikha. Yeah, it's quite a unique mascot. I mean, I think Qatar is always, always introducing very interesting mascots in terms of design and name. And I think this is really a unique uh, mascot to complement the brand of the World Cup. But the mascot itself, Sheikh, the mascot itself, it's uh, it's reflecting the, the great Qatari tradition hospitality, you know, that we put over our head, the Ghatra, and, and showcasing actually our tradition that, you know, we, we are very grateful to the people who comes to Qatar and uh, experience the, the traditional and the custom of uh, Qatar in this part of the world. Yes, and uh, explain to our listeners what does La'ib mean? 
Well, Naib, that means, you know, he's a, he's a, you know, like a, a very high skilled person. And when among the 11 people, that, uh, players that they play, there are always one stars, like if we say Pelé, among the Brazilian team, Messi or Maradona uh, uh, and, you know, Ronaldo and, you know, so on. So the, the Naib, that the guy who has a lot of skills, uh, that he is really like a... Uh, he's a magic, actually, that he's, uh, he plays with the football and he has so many high uh, skills that people that are very impressive and very, uh, you know, enjoy that when he is touching the ball. Abdullah, as a person who is now the director of the Sports and Olympic Museum, as well as being deeply involved with the National Olympic Committee and all these different events, what are you hoping that the legacy from having the FIFA World Cup in Qatar will be? Well, I think uh, the luckiest people uh, to get the legacy, it's the Qatar Olympic Sport Museum because, you know, b- by the way, in our exhibition, I forgot to mention, we dedicated a, a, a daily object collecting from FIFA and it will be displayed in one of the sections in that football exhibition. And by concluding the event and after 30 days, we will have a huge uh, a number of the uh, of the objects and we will be own, owned by, by us. Uh, the legacy is, is always a story. You know, I can, if, you, if I may, Sheikha, uh, we had, we hosted the 2006 Asian game and, you know, look at the Aspire zone, the dome that conduct uh, total 15 indoor halls and uh, surrounding with a great park that people uh, doing the exercising during uh, their, their uh, you know, uh, break time. For World Cup, I think uh, we will be having a lot of legacies, not only objects, but the infrastructure, the stadiums. The most important legacy, Sheikha, that we building up our human resources and getting their experience and they can, you know, be take part in the, around the world. To be honest with you, today, after the Asian game we hosted, we have almost uh, more than nine Qataris, the president of the uh, Asian Federation, different sports. We have Qataris, they are in the FIFA executive board. We have Qataris, they are in the board of IWF and handball and so on. So that's why these are the legacy that Qatar, the government of Qatar investing in the human resources, not only in the infrastructure, but also they inf- invest uh, always in the human resources. And His Highness the Amir, uh, Sheikh Tamim, in all his... Uh, when he delivered a speech to, to the people of Qatar during the council and then yearly, he always highlight the importance of the human resources and the investment in the human resources. Yes, I agree to you. I think um, His Highness the Emir and in all of his speeches, the human development, the human resources is, is the number one priority for us. And I think you're absolutely right. This will be a, a definite legacy. And having also the sports museum linked to the stadium makes it a very unique experience to the fans. I don't think it's ever been experienced before when fans can visit a museum before the games. If they are ticket holders, they can enter a museum. But also our museum has a gastronomy uh, sh- um, restaurant with Tom Aikens, as well as a healthy cafe, an amazing gift shop. And you didn't really talk about the, the active zone. Would you like to talk a little bit about that zone for children? It's, it's very popular. I know my children want to go to the sports museum to play there. Well, uh, you know, the last gallery that, you know, I think uh, it was a great idea from your excellency and it was your idea to to, ha- to make the, this museum different than any other museum around the world to have the, acti- uh, the activation zone. The activation zone, it's attracting a lot, not only the children, but attracting, you know, uh, the youth, the, the old and the young and the children as well. Uh, we have 18 interactive uh, machines and they can do a lot of activities to, to, to check their ability. It is a, a discovering talent. It's not only a game that play, uh, the children plays and go home. No, it's actually uh, enhancing uh, their talent and they could be a future national team players because it depends on the strength. And the, and the thinking and climbing and, uh, and, the, and, the, and you know, uh, also in the balancing. So it is really very attractive, uh, you know, uh, gallery that it, uh, we have a total square, 2,000 square meters out of our total, uh, you know, uh, museum, which is 19,000 square meters. 2,000 we dedicated for this gallery to enhance and to discover the talent of the youngest uh, generation that it could they could be only uh, they could be a national team and also for their 
uh, to keep their uh, healthy lifestyle. We have a dedicated place. Our national team players, they are advising them how to eat, uh, the, you know, how to do the, the to control their eating and their, to, to have to change their lifestyle uh, as they have uh, really uh, the demonstrating the, uh, the, the portion of each uh, part of the, the food that they should eat and concentrate on. We are expecting, uh, Qatar will expect 1.5 million to visit during the World Cup. So we, our doors are open. You know, we expected at least from 300 to 500 uh, visitors to visit our museum and our door is open. And we are, will be more than happy to guide them, to take them as an activation zone. We'll, we'll connect a visitor to the wealth of sports and physical activity opportunity across Qatar by collecting a personal physical literacy, a profiling, and then down Downloading our app, the museum aims to help visitors find the sports and activities they might enjoy and they might build their talent and that. Shit. Thank you, Abdullah. I think yeah, this is a nice way to conclude. You know, every museum we built has a very specific mission that serves our local community. And uh, as you are aware, Qatar and the region has some of the highest levels of child obesity and diabetes um, due to lifestyle because you know, the lifestyle has changed. And I think raising awareness in terms of nutrition and food and active lifestyle is a key mission to the museum. And I think you and your team have done a wonderful job. Well, you know, my first message hosting this big event, it's not a it's matter of only a football, but it is exchanging culture between all these spectators and the teams that they will be visiting Qatar during this big event. And this is the purpose actually, to make the friendship and to learn about uh, exchanging the culture between the countries. And this is exactly what we did during the Asian game. So the World Cup, it's a great opportunity to come and to learn about, the, you know, this part of the world in the Middle East. Uh, it is true that Qatar is a very small country and, 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 you know, in the space, but it is really a huge, big in, uh, you know, uh, implementing and getting the people together, the countries together. And this is the, 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 the main aim of hosting this uh, big event. So I believe that it is a great opportunity for the visitors to learn about Qatar, not only the, our sports museum, but we have other uh, six, seven museums that it will be in the fan zone, the, uh, the Islamic Museum, and also the Nation, Qatar National Museum. It is all the doors are open to, to, to find and to, to learn about the history uh, of Qatar. I think uh, the, the team is a legacy for us in itself. They've achieved many great things. They also have... Most of them have come out of the Aspire Academy, so it is a legacy in itself with the population of our size. So thank you, Abdullah, for your time. I wish you and your team the best of luck hosting all these guests through the, to, through the sports museum. So thank you so much and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Sheikha, and uh, I was so happy to, 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 to share all my uh, ideas with uh, you and uh, the audience. Thank you, Sheikha Abdullah. Thank you. Thank you.